Got it, man. Three, two, one, go. Hello, hello, hello. This is Corey Thompson. <laughs> and this oh, is you the want my whole intro. All right, let's start that again. Start that again. <laughs> Hold on. I always you're, forget how you're, you want to do You're that. really bad at this. I, guess. I am. You just, this is the short. I'll do it again. I apologize. It's an, I know. This is a short thing. There's a short <laughs> intro, and then later there's a, what am I up to? And this is the funny thing. Give me, give of, me a, shut up. Give me a three, two, one. This is, this is all <laughs> going to be on the video, but this will not be on the audio. So the video people get this, this stuff to show how bad Corey come is come at on, doing come this, come even come though he's come been on. doing this for how long now? All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Three, two, one, go. Hello, hello, hello. This is Corey Thompson, news coordinator for Dice Tower, uh, host of Dice Tower Now Weekly Podcast, creator of Dice Tower Dish interview blog, and executive producer of a board, board TV on YouTube. No, no, you got, uh, we're going to go with this, but it's too long. Be more brief. Hello, this is Stephen Bonacore, the pod father of gaming. You are listening to Board Games Insider, episode 285. And we're recording this on July 26th, 2023, until that I correct Corey on these things. Board Games Insider is a proud member of the Dice Tower Network. And this week is all about gaming, gaming, and more gaming. I'm at the WBC in southwestern Pennsylvania, literally the sticks of Pennsylvania. And I'm here with buddies, and this is going to be great. <laughs> no Tom Vassell in sight. Life is good. Corey, how are you, my friend? I just noted that you said I was too long on the intro, and then you gave a longer intro. My intro is to intro the show. I say my, my you know what? You're an intern. Remember that. You might be fired <laughs> at any moment. And this is by Ignacy. He might fire you at any moment, so you better be good. At I, any I, moment. What? I'm good with that. I'm okay. So we're, This gives me more free reign to do whatever I want. Where are you this week? Are you in uh, in L.A.? I think you're in L.A., right? This week, I'm actually up in Napa Valley. Uh, so I've been here for a little while taking care of home stuff, uh, just having a rough time in the sun, in the hot tub, in the pool, with the big gaming house, uh, but having a good old time. A uh, couple exciting things going on up here. Um, so first of all, I want to say that Seas of Strife is now out in the wild. The uh, Texas Showdown is one of my favorite inaccessible trick-taking games. And uh, Seas of Strife is the reprint of Texas Showdown from Rio Grande Games, and it's just come out in the wild, so that's exciting. Also, I'm finalizing my trip to Iceland for the Midgard Board Gaming Tournament, September 9th through 11th. Reykjavik, baby, it's awesome. But right now, I'm kind of in panic mode for Gen Con. Uh, I think this episode's going to air right at the beginning of Gen Con, a week from now. But it is total panic mode. Above Board is doing a big splash at Gen Con. We've got two shows. We've got our celebrity show on Friday morning at 10 a.m. in the big the big hall, the big auditions. And we've got a cast Q&A on Saturday at 10 a.m. So... Come visit. We got skins. We got cups. We got giveaways. It's going to be great. Very cool. I mean, I can't wait for it. I'm going to be there. It's. I mean, Gen Con in general. I mean, I'm. I'm obviously in the moment here at WBC, but at Gen Con is going to be epic. I look forward to just hanging out with you and seeing all the above board stuff. Should be fantastic. Over here with the Podfather Gaming, uh, my challenge of the week to you all out there, which is also the video of the week. And I mentioned it last week, but this is, I got to underscore this, The Quad, the new board game geek show that I host, co-host with three other miscreants from around the industry. Um, the, the, the fifth show uh, was just recorded last week and Corey was on that one, but we just dropped another show last week. So Go to Board Game Geek right on the front page under their announcements. You're going to see a whole bunch of things, podcasts by Candace Harris, who's one of my co-hosts on the show. She's amazing. Uh, go there and search for The Quad and check us out. We take one topic every week and we talk about it and we all pick a game within that topic and we try to and we argue. We specifically argue about why our game is the best in that arena. So please 
do yourself a favor. I think you will like this video content. It's pretty, pretty darn cool. I had such a good time recording it. It was amazing. Everybody's great, even though they gave me the most terrible topic in the world. It's a great, <laughs> great show. Uh, it's love, Candace. Love, Matthew. You're all right. And I'm okay. And there you uh, go. There you go. Okay. It was so fun. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Uh, and as I mentioned, WBC, not to be confused <laughs> with the World Series of Board Gaming. That's the event that's in September that I am uh intim- intimately involved with now i'm on the board of directors for them uh and i'm a vip there each year now um please also go and check out wsbg world series board game wsbgvegas.com check out the event 16 ring tournaments ring events where if you win the entire tournament you get a gold ring to say you were the champion of a <laughs> given game for the entire year it's a it's a it's engraved with the game and the year. Amazing. You can get $40 off your ticket by using code PODFATHER at WSBGVegas.com. So check that out. As I mentioned, Gen Con next week, I can't can't say how much I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, and as a brief aside, here at the WBC, and of course next week, please come by. You see me, t- tap me on the shoulder. You say, Bonacore, I want to talk. Let's talk for a little bit. Last night, I've only been here at the WBC uh, since 4 p.m. yesterday. It's now 9 a.m., 9.40 a.m. Um, I've already had five people come over to me, and I expected like nobody to know who I was or remember me. I used to come here seven years ago when it was in Lancaster, PA, but then I stopped going, and then, of course, I moved to Florida, so now it's a really big trip. But people just keep coming over saying, love your stuff, love this, this is great, thank you for coming. So please, I love this. We all do. We all want to hear from you. We want to bond with you. We want to game with you. We want to have a beer with you, and we want to talk to you. So if you see me at Gen Con, this will drop right when Gen Con starts. Come by and say hello. And now in the meantime, let's get to the event deck. So Corey... um, we have it's a lightish news week, I would say this week, but we have yeah, something yeah. from Exploding Kittens. Did you put this in here? I did. I thought it was interesting. Exploding Kittens, who's generally known for shock value humor, but kind of a mass market level fun light games, you know, throw burritos at each other, things like that. They've launched a new line of games just for kids. Then they've created a new imprint a new company name for them and they are kitten games uh so kitten games has four games that they've announced they've got i want my teeth back where you collect a mouthful of teeth there is hurry up chicken butt which i think is just self-explanatory but uh says it's inspired by hot potato it has silly challenges and a chicken shaped shaker that clucks There's the best worst ice cream where you create odd, disgusting ice cream flavors like eyeballs and earthworms. Good stuff. And my parents might be Martian, which is a junior version of Exploding Kittens title Poetry for Neanderthals. Uh, So uh, I think it's pretty cool that they're expanding into kind of kid level shock humor games, which is a great niche. I think they'll do great. It is it is interesting that that they would decide that they would pick this. I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, sure, they do light games, but these are specifically children's games. Like they, they're mentioning in that press release that yeah. it's like down to four years old or something like that. Did you see that? Yeah, one of the owners of the company said that he found a surprising lack of games for kids the age of his preschooler. So he wanted to fill that fill that niche. Wow. So that that is that to me was very interesting. Um, what else we got, Corey? What else we got here? Hold on a second. Steven's on. Well, Steven missed his. Uh, Steven missed. <laughs> oh, okay. I can. I no, can I got it. The ball. Uh, it's okay. I All missed. Right, you go. I missed the, um, the 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 tab because I was setting up for the next thing. Um, so, yeah, people on the move. We always like to talk about people who uh, are in the industry, a lot of people we know and love in the industry, and what's happening to them. And this week, we had two of our very good friends um, take new positions within the industry. Yeah. I'll go first. Um, Danny Lowe. She's actually been in the industry for a pretty darn long time, um, basically as long as I've been in the industry, and she's 
pretty young. So she's been here since she was very young. And she has now moved uh, from Hachette. She had left Hachette. And we reported on that, I believe. Um, but now she is at the Flat River Group. Now, Flat River is both a, they do a bunch of things. They uh, they now do yeah. consolidation like PSI. They do distribution and they actually have publishing arms as well. So Danny um, is an industry veteran who has spent the last 10 years working for a number of companies in the industry, most recently Hachette. Uh, and she's worked at Yellow and Pandasaurus. And now her new role there is going to be with Hobby Product Marketing Manager. I assume you know Danny as well, Corey? Oh, of course. Yeah. And Danny will do great wherever, wherever they end up. So uh, love Danny. Always so friendly every time. That, Absolutely. Uh, I see at meetings. So, and I was excited about this a while ago, Danny announced that she was leaving Hachette, but with all glowing terms that Hachette was a great place and she was so sad to leave, but yeah. an offer came up, she couldn't refuse. So right. we, in the industry, would kind of die in to hear where this new location is and it's been really kept secret. So congratulations, Flat River Group. Absolutely. And the other one I'd like you to talk about, because I know you know this person very well, and I know them well as well. So Brie, uh, Brie is fantastic. And I had the, the great pleasure of working with Brie with Lucky Duck for a really long time. So Brie Goldman has now been made marketing manager at Arcane Wonders, which is fantastic. Uh, super congratulations to Brie. Uh, I can't think of a better person. Brie is so hardworking, does such amazing stuff for the industry. I'm always so excited to see Brie anytime I go to a con. Always there. Yeah, always, always just so friendly, so loving, you know, huggy and just cool. We, I, I actually spent time. Um, she invited me to her home in Las Vegas, uh, a little bit of Henderson, I guess oh, maybe awesome. it is. Yeah, and uh, that was like um, when I was there, maybe for Dice Tower West a couple of years ago or something like that. So uh, saw her and her cats and stuff like that, and we played some games. Was, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. So congratulations, both Danny and Bree. I'm sure you're going to do great at these new companies. Yep. Next one is Hasbro teaming up with Explored to help integrate AI and multimedia technologies into their board games. A little so bit about this. I, Go ahead, Corey. Oh, I'd love to run with Explored because this is a company that I've been excited about for a while. Back in 2019, I believe, uh, Explored announced that they had the Taburu game system, which was this high-tech board that would detect dice and cards and players and would Bluetooth out to screens onto pads and phones and would kind of game master games. And originally, Explored was announced with CMON that CMON titles would end up on it. But CMON has since left the project. Explored is still going on. They had a Kickstarter not that long ago for uh, their first game, uh, which had a very long name. I don't recall the name of their first game. It was a Zodiac driven game, but now explored with this super cool Taburu technology is teaming up with Hasbro. Uh, so super exciting news on that end. So it's, it's so it's, this is, is interesting on another level. So I didn't think that when I, when I heard about that they released this Taboru game system. It was almost like they released the system and then it was crickets. I didn't know anybody it who had quiet it. quiet for a really long time. And I didn't know anybody who had it. Um, mm -hmm. Tom and Dice Tower had a copy of it, sort of a review copy, and they were playing on it. And they loved it. They said it was just great. But everything, of course, you needed to have a, a, a game that – was compatible with it because you'd put the cards down or the, or the miniatures yeah. down and it has to detect what it is. So there has to be some, a chip or something like exactly. that and everything, you know, so it was very limited. You needed more components just to use the system. So, so let me just say real quick, their first game was the bad karmas and the curse of the Zodiac, which okay. is a minis driven fighting game. It's, I know I couldn't remember the title off the top of my head. I don't know why. But uh, this was on their Kickstarter. The second one they announced, which is also very exciting, is Vampire the Masquerade Milan Uprising will be available on uh, the Taboo system. Those are the two announced games for the, the hardware for Taboo. That is cool, actually, because I'm a big fan of Vampire the Masquerade and that, um, that uh, <clears throat> genre, the World of Darkness genre. So that's a cool one. 
Final piece of news we have this week is Jasco Games rebranding as UVS Games. Um, I'm not as familiar with Jasco. I mean, I've heard of them, of course, but um, what are they known for? Do you uh, do you know, Corey? Yeah, they did the their top title is the Buffy game, the Buffy board game. The, not the um, original Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? Not that one, which I love that game. It's Buffy Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the board game from 2016. Okay, not the one from like 2001 or two, which is a really good game. <laughs> Do you know that one? I mean, that that one is I, honestly is I haven't played any of them. So. Okay, but uh, yeah, their their top games they have a Street Fighter miniatures game, and they did the Exceed series, which is a head to head fighting game. Most notably, uh, Exceed Street Fighter had Street Fighter characters, head to head card games. But Jasco was kind of known for uh some of these uh japanese anime themed import games they had mega man <clears throat> a lot of ip games but what's really big is they did this they did a lot of card systems card battling systems including uh universal fighting system and i think that the new name is uh, a call to the Universus CCG system. So UVS stands for Universus CCG. So the rebranding is really setting up the company as a CCG, especially a head-to-head -head battling CCG company. So they're going to be coming out with, or they have out already a CCG, you're saying, and they're going to try to compete now, not only with Magic the Gathering, Right, because that's hard. Not only with Pokemon, but now with Lorcana. Well, it's not at that high a level of CCG. This is more competition with uh, things like uh, Exceed and uh, some of these collectible fighting card game systems, but not to the level of Pokemon or Magic. Very interesting. Well, good luck to them. It's going to be tough to. That the they CCG also, market is going to change a lot within the next is, year. Their big announcement with the name change is that they're going to be doing a My Hero Academia CCG. So okay. that is an anime that has some pretty good following. So that should get some people on board. Very cool. A quick one. Speaking of Lorcana, Ravensburger actually announced that they were bringing out an app or they just put out an app. Maybe this yeah. is like their, um, we don't even it's have it in already. the show notes. We don't even have it in the show notes, but but I saw this uh, and just quickly, they put out an app and I guess this is a teaser for stuff to come. I don't, can you, can you play on it yet? Uh, no, but the app is there. It has a library of all the cards. Okay. And it's there to help people learn how to play the game. There you go. And to help build their decks. Because Larkana is a collect it, build a deck, play a game. Very magic-like in that way. So the app is, I think it's out all already. And it's because Larkana is dropping at Gen Con in a week, week and a half. And... Uh, so the app is there to get people used to how to run the game, how to build a deck, and what different cards are. So it is kind of an intro tutorial for going out and buying the game. Can you actually buy the game? Uh, you can't buy Locana yet. At Gen Con, yeah. You should be able to buy it at Gen Con. Wow. Okay. I did not know that. I might have to That's pick the up. plan. That's the plan. Might have uh, to pick up a starter deck or two. Just for Now, barring, you know, huge demand... Uh, crowds beyond belief and lawsuits <laughs> should be available at Gen Con. Well, the, law the lawsuit is not going to stop them from from doing that no. portion of it. Later on, it could stop them, but we'll see what happens. No, I'm being facetious. Let's move into strategy and tactics. All right, we did have that contest. The contest is over, but I have not picked the winner yet. I'm sorry. So you're going to have to oh. wait at least another week to find out. Again, I'm going to thank... Um, I'm dying to know if I won. You did not win. Gamers, the Grand Gamers Guild, and Mark Spector, thank you for being part of the sponsorship. And, of course, Portal. And, of course, Corey. And, of course, myself. Uh, we'll pick the winners, and then we'll go get addresses, and we'll send you some stuff next time. In the meantime, we have Duncan McGregor, who's at Ardvark179 on BGG. He asks, every year you ask people to vote for you in the Golden Geek Awards. Yes, we do. But... Do you get any feedback apart from winners and runners up about how well the different nominees have done in other awards, such as Hugo awards, a complete breakdown of votes is published. There's a breakdown of 2022, blah, blah, blah. The only information I can find about golden geeks is the voting method used, but no breakdown. So the answer there is simple. No, they do not. Now I, 
<laughs> they do not release any information. They just say this is the one that won, and these were the runners up, the th- three. And we we often come as a as a runner up. I don't even remember if we did this year. Maybe we did. But um, it was funny. One year, one year I know that Aldi, who's a good friend, right? Scott Alden uh, who owns it. He did tell me that we were very close to winning. But you know, now there's so many podcasts and so much good content that. We're not going to probably win. I would appreciate if we try again next year, but we probably won't win. Just as an aside, Aardvark 179, I am a card carrying holder of the United States Aardvark Stud Registry. <laughs> put it out there. There you go. Shari, who's at <laughs> Sorcha, she asks, What is a skill that you would learn and is technically possible for you to learn, but for whatever reason, it just hasn't happened this is a great question this is like you know getting to know us personally so Corey, do you have a specific skill that you know you wish you would learn wow. i mean i i mean i'll start if you can't think of one i mean i have always wanted to learn how to play guitar i mean you know i've been in bands um as a singer for you know when i was when i was in high school i i'm not a good singer i can carry a tune usually <laughs> So let's make sure everyone understands it. So if we do karaoke or something like that, I'll pick I'll pick some Billy Joel or some Elton John, and I'll do pretty much okay if you guys help me out singing it. Uh, and if anybody saw me at Gen Con 2019, I did the the rock and roll and right when I introduced all those roll and rights, and I came out on stage dressed as Elton John, and I sang. That was them. awesome. Thank that you. That was awesome. There's a lot Your of Elton John outfit was just spot on. And I and I changed outfits. <laughs> oh. Oh my God, I just lost my, oh. my headset. Uh, sorry. <laughs> These great little things that happen, you know, when, especially when you're away in a hotel room. Um, yeah, I course. changed I changed outfits mid, mid show even. So it was really funny. So it was great. It was a great time while I was, while we were there. Um, anyway, uh, playing guitar would be probably be the thing I would want to do. I just, it's, a, it's, I'm not good. I'm just not it's good so at it. Much- I've tried. Frustration when you start is hard. Yeah, to do. I know. That's Before part anything- of the problem yeah that i run into is i'm really a jack of all trades i've done so many different things and gotten good at almost none of them and i would love to get better at these uh i play banjo but i had that's awesome uh, tendon issues and tendon surgery while i was learning which dropped my skill level right back down to the bottom and it's really hard to to get through that frustration and start playing again uh mostly i'd love to learn another language uh, i know i'm pretty good at german uh i've taken french and japanese and i i am almost passable but i'd, I'd really love to actually be very good at one of these languages greek has always been on my list very 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 cool yeah another one would be just simply to like learn like another language even if it's not a useful one like klingon no i wouldn't do klingon i would i would love to relearn italian because i learned it in high school that was my language in high school um but you you have no passably you do pretty good in italian no 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 oh no 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 no. i remember setting your gps in the car to italian and you were pretty good at it except you thought that your mother was yelling at you to make all the turns (laughs) A destra, a destra, sinestra, right, left, big deal. No, <laughs> my Italian is my Italian is the Italian of a three-year-old, and probably not that because I you just don't use it. So you, you your forget. English is the English of a three-year-old, so you're all good. <laughs> but I speak fluent Brooklynese. So do not you start do. with me, Shari. Also, <laughs> I love doing this podcast. <laughs> Shari also asks a merit badge for board game exists in Boy Scouts. If someone made a badge for board game playing and teaching, what should some of the requirements be? Oh, I love that's, that question. That's, that's awesome. A, that's a great one. Okay, so for board game playing and teaching. So this is so the merit badge for board game design. Man, that would be very interesting to see like who like what games these kids, right, are designing. I would love to see that. But okay, so for board game playing and teaching, what would would the requirements be? Let's brainstorm a few requirements. Yeah. So obviously, uh, you have to teach a game. And I would say that you have to teach several games from a light level to a more complex level. You have to have the people that you've taught be able to then go on and teach the game and have a good time with the game. I really enjoy teaching board games, and I think it's a skill. And you definitely see people who are better at it and people who are worse at it. And a good teach, I absolutely love. I mean, I remember 
strongly. The best teach I ever had uh, was for Wild Gardens from Lindsay Road at PAX. Uh, the teach for that game was just amazing, uh, out of this world. So how about you, board game teaching? What what yeah. would be your requirement? I would I would say that you know you you basically hit it right. right? You'd have to be you would have to teach. Say and I, you, we, we're not going to add like a game like Twilight Imperium Four into like you know somebody. No, trying but to I teach think that. Ark Nova would be a really good one because that's a tough teach. Well, yeah, but it's, that would take so long. I would say teach a light game. Teach uh, something more middleweight, you know, take a Tarite style kind of thing. That's just still light, maybe a little bit heavier than that. Teach the games, and if the players can play them, then you have, you successfully, you know, have done it. You'd have to do it with people who are kind of gamers because some people, you know, goes in one ear, goes out the other ear. But, you know, you would have to be able to go through it, go through it a couple of times with two different kinds of games. I think that would be pretty cool. And that's a good question. Gavin Kenny, who's at, Gav Ken from the UK asks, how often do you tell a game designer that having fewer components or changing the size of the component would make the game more profitable and easier to ship and fit in a smaller box? So let me take that as a former publisher. Well, as I've a never had that discussion. Yeah, you probably have never had that discussion. But, but I've been but, on the other side of it. But you can but you can you can envision this type of Absolutely. conversation, right? Because you have you have as many designer friends as I do essentially. Um you the, the conversation with the designer um always goes something like assuming you, you know, the game is picked up or 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 you like it enough to have this level of conversation. You're like well, you know, why don't we make this component like this because it'll be cooler? Or let's make this component like this because it'll be easier to put into the box. So it's not the, the conversation might mention profitability and easier to ship, but it's also literally about the entire sequence of what do we want this game to look like? What do we want this game to be? Um, because it has to have, we want table presence, we want you know, we wanted to make money on the game as a publisher. So all of that together comes into a conversation. This is a good question, but it's not necessarily about the things that you mentioned there, Gavin. Well, I have a couple friends, uh, designer friends, who are going through these discussions right now. And some of the things that come up are uh, publisher A is known for really amazing components and publisher B is known for maybe less amazing components. So do you want to get more sales with components you're less happy with, or do you want to get less more, do you want to get less sales with really amazing components? And oftentimes for the designer, it comes down to a decision between protecting their art and looking for money. So and it also depends on the the right the platform. Like if you're going to kickstart <laughs> something, obviously the components that go in there. Then you're like always the conversation. If if you're going to yeah. put the game on Kickstarter, the conversation there is what greater things can we put on this box in this box to make it look better? Let's you know a really good example of that is yeah. Last Last Light. Right, this is Roy Canaday of the Dice Tower. Yes. He created this game, uh, Last Light. It's just about to release. It has table presence beyond table presence. Right, I mean your traveling through the galaxy to the forward. center oh, so good it's got 3d planets that are colorful orbs all over now this game could have been done with chits that you put on the board right and it, and it could have been the the, the, the ships yep. could have been chits and everything could have been just cardboard and cubes and guess what it's a Kickstarter game. The price point is much higher. This is just the way it works. And I am sure that Gray Fox Games said, this is beautiful. We're putting this on Kickstarter and we're going to produce it just like this. So is that about profitability? Uh, it's about like, I think we can sell a crap ton of this on Kickstarter at a high price point. <laughs> so it's sort of the inverse, right? So very it's good. Balancing act. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Uh, Gavin then also asks, remember, we're going to have a lot of these like the same person asking questions in a row because of the contest. Uh, he also says, which board game design do you personally think is the most elegant that you've seen? 
Oh, very tough. Well, you know, most elegant is a wow. You know, how about like just name something that is particularly elegant? I don't know because it's Are always you... going to be kind of cult of the new for me. The games that stick in my mind are the ones that I've played recently, and they tend to be the more games. So I'll tell you the new Uva Rosenberg game from Spielworks. It's Oranienberger Canal, and I think I've pronounced that right. It is so freaking elegant. Every little piece of that just feeds into itself, and it just works. Um, it's a two-player Euro game, uh, card placement maximizing points. Each card you place can activate a maximum of twice, once when you surround the card with roads, and once when you put two bridges next to the card. So planning all this out and figuring out the best way to get it all, get your engine running, it's it's super elegant. Yeah. And, you know, you can basically insert into this, like, what's the most elegant, almost every, you know, really lovely Euro game, because that's the difference, right? Right. And so, so for people out there to yeah get the concepts of what we are talking about, sometimes people have more knowledge than others. The Euro games, they are focused on mechanics, right? Streamlined mechanics. Not everyone has got perfectly streamlined mechanics, but lots of them come out with these beautiful, elegant yep. mechanics. You 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 place a worker here, you collect this stuff. You place a worker here, you deliver this stuff. This is the, elegance. The number of cards matches the number of turns, which matches the number of choices. Right. right. It all just fits. Glory, then, that's an elegant game. <laughs> and then the opposite of that, of course, is the thematic or the American style game where Elegance is so much less important. They can be elegant, but so much less important. And randomness and heavy dripping of theme is really yes. what is prized in the American style game. So I'm a, I can't even pick one that I would think is most elegant. I certainly think things like Kalis set a set a standard for worker placement and and uh, traveling down a board and stuff like that. It's an old school game. But, yeah, uh, like Le Havre is elegant. It elegant is worker placement game with one worker. There you elegant. go. Right. Elegant, elegant. So thank you, Gavin. We're going to give one more to Gavin and then we'll move on. Uh, what do you think will be the next trend in board games? Gavin, I ask yeah. you that question. And if you can answer it, we're going to go into business again together and we're going to make millions. So <laughs> it's it's right obviously now. impossible to answer that question. What do you <laughs> thematic, think? Thematic trends I can kind of see because I see new games. I see prototypes, things like that. Mushrooms. There's so many freaking mushroom games all right on the end. I, I'm serious. Uh, mushrooms. <laughs> mushroom games. Huh? That's where you're going with this? Mushroom games? In general, I think the gaming industry is moving towards light, elegant, family weight games. So we had a trend for a while for very, very complex games. Gaming was considered, you know two, three steps above what you could get mass market. And right now, I think there's a pendulum swing back. I think that hobby gamers and people in the industry are not as, I mean, there's still an interest in big complicated games, but not quite as much. I think the publishers are all looking for that next Century Spice Road, Azul. They're looking for light, elegant, simple, just works. Yeah, I mean... Yes. Um, every, the, the the trend now is to create games that play in an hour. I think that's the way, yes. you know, you know, you, you know, you want to have enough meat on his bones that it's not like a throwaway, um, but you can't sell that many games that go on for three and four hours. You just, so that's, that's the trend and that's where we are. And that's actually where we've been for years. So it's for not a, a new one yeah. and, but it's, but it's still a good question, but if we really if you come up with a really great one, let's talk and we'll make millions. And with that, let's go to over to play <laughs> testing. So, so last week I asked, I asked the question um, and it was about the podcast. It was about this podcast and or video cast. And I asked everybody, um, do you listen and I don't even know where. Oh, I know where I am. I, I, I'm on the wrong page, of course. Again, do you listen to Board Games <laughs> Insider on audio podcast or do you watch us on video on the Podfather Gaming YouTube channel? And then if on audio, what platform do you um, do you use it? Is it iTunes, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, et cetera? So, Corey, 
Um, the, the, the thing that we're going to see here is, is some kind of trend yeah. because we got a lot of answers because this is an easy one. You're either going to say YouTube or you're oh, going to yeah, say audio. Tons of answers. So yeah. what do you think? What do you, did you add them up? I did not add them up, but I wanted to see generally uh, where we are. Yeah. Overwhelmingly it's audio over video and overwhelmingly it is, uh, Apple podcast leading with Spotify, uh, pretty close behind. So yeah, I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing it at about four five to one, uh, and that's I I haven't looked at everything yet five to one, uh, audio, which makes sense because we've been on audio sure. for eight plus years, and I've only been putting the video up for two or so of those years, uh, and a lot of and people who, listen on. Who wants to look at that? I mean, who, who wants to look at your face? You know, me. They they go there to look at my face because I am they pretty. Do. I am pretty. They do. Yes. Yes. And they're but, so disappointed when they meet you in person. Right? <laughs> but the, but there are people saying YouTube exclusively. So that, and not, you know, a lot of the people like from, you know, from the watch it played world, from the shut up and sit down world, from the dice tower world, right? They are video people. So they're going to hit YouTube. But of course, we have a lot more people saying audio and I use Apple audio yeah. and I use the podcast app you know, on, on the, uh, probably on the iPhone audio on Google, um, podcast po pocket casts app. I don't know what that one is, but I guess there's plenty of these apps where you can. Yeah. That's the interesting in. thing for me is there's a lot of variability on which app, which system they're using for podcasts. And I haven't heard of a bunch of, them. yeah, I see. There's uh, also a couple mentions here about Stitcher, which you brought up last time, but it sounds like, uh, Stitcher is going to be discontinued. So people are, moving to spotify oh yeah but they're shutting down in august i did not know that so i guess people will go over to spotify or one of the other ones um but yeah overwhelmingly of course is this is audio i would say it's after looking a little bit deeper here it's probably six to one five to one or six to one uh audio over uh the youtube channel um i would appreciate if some people did check out the YouTube channel, though, once in a while, because I think there's, there's besides this and seeing us interact together here, you also get a little bit extra stuff like Corey messing up his introduction all the time and things like that. So it's <laughs> it's fun. Anyway, uh, well, anyway, we uh, will hard to find a moment to speak when you're not talking. <laughs> So I have another question, if that's okay, Corey. I know that was my question last week, but I'm going to put up another one because I think, yeah, this, is a, I think this is a good one for, for this week's episode. Um, we're more than halfway through the year 2023. So do you have a front runner for your best new game of 2023? And why is it not War of the Rings the card? You write that in there. No, no, no. I Wait. never do something no, he, like that. He's cheating. So, what, do you have a do you have a front runner? War of the Ring, the card game is from last year. It came out, so it wouldn't be it can't be that. Do you have a front runner for your new best game of 2023? Uh, uh, are you waiting to make a judgment because your new best game of 2023 is releasing a Gen Con or Essen or later in the year? So, Corey, do you have a front runner yet? I don't. Uh, my my 2023 has been such a blur. Uh, as far as light games, I think Potato Man is a really cool game. A uh, little card taking trick game. I don't know if that counts as 2023 because it was mm -hmm. out, but you couldn't get it until very recently. It was in other countries. Uh, okay. Again, this two player Uwe Rosenberg, Oranin Burger Canal, I think is an amazing yeah. game, but it's got, I know, a very limited audience right. just by the nature of it. Right. Um, I'd really have to look back at it. So, right. I'm My. Sure. Uh, mine's easy. Uh, at the moment, uh, my best new game of 2023 is Thunder Road Vendetta. If you're looking for just stupid fun, this <laughs> is what is in this box. It is stupid fun. You're going to laugh. You're not going to care that you are. And there goes the air conditioning. So now I'm going to have this, this background noise. You're going to have all of this insanity on the game board. You don't care if your car gets knocked off the board um, via getting getting bumped and you lose the game because it's just fun. So that's my current pick. Will I will that change? I'll, oh. let, you, I'll let you know after Gen Con and after Essen, I guess. Cosmoctopus. I got to put my vote in for Cosmoctopus. Light, elegant, so fun, so easy to pick up. 
thematic even for a Euro resource collection game. I was lucky enough to be able to play test it. So I feel like it's older, but it's releasing at Gen Con. So Cosmo Octopus, great game. Very cool. Now we will be putting this question on the guild. So please go find the play testing thread with this question and give us your answer. And hopefully we'll read what you have to say about this. Now, because we've got all of this sound coming from the background here, so our Joshua is going to have to put a filter on this. Let's get to I final. Can read, I can read the final scoring if you want. No, I will read the final ah. scoring. Since I do it so badly, I want to continue doing it badly. The final <laughs> scoring. Fine. Thank you all so much for listening, and help us spread the word about this podcast by telling your friends to download Board Games Insider wherever they like to get their podcasts, not on Stitcher apparently anymore, or you can watch Board Games Insider on the Podfather of Gaming YouTube channel. Do you want to be part of this podcast? You certainly can, and we'd love for you to be. Go to uh, our guild on Board Game Geek and answer the questions uh, that uh, we pose to you in playtesting or give us questions in strategy and tactics. The websites are portalgamesus.com, podfathergaming.com, and dicetowerdish.com. Social media, like our pages, slash board games insider, slash portal games us, and slash podfather gaming. Then talk directly to us on Instagram and Twitter at Portal Games US, at Podfather Gaming, at Dice Tower Dish, at Dice Tower Now, and the YouTube channels. Portal Games Movies, The Podfather of Gaming, and Above Board TV. Ignacy is on TikTok alone, Portal Games US. We'll see you <laughs> at Gen Con. Come say hello. Come to Corey's event for Above Board. It's going to be amazing. Board Games Insider was professionally edited by Joshua Bowman from Tabletop Submarine Podcast. If you want him to edit yours, Go reach him at tabletopsubmarine at gmail.com. And that lovely voice doing the intro, outro, and in-between segments is that of Ray Greenlee. He can be contacted to do voiceover work at raygreenleevoiceover.com. Do you have anything else to add, sir? I am so frazzled. I can <laughs> add, find us at Gen Con. Above board, we'll be doing giveaways. Uh let me just say that there probably will be some breakfast giveaways if you're in the right place at the right time. You want something, a nice little sneaky snack? Every morning, there'll be a breakfast giveaway. Some place we have to find you to, to make that happen, I guess. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to, I hope I get the inside scoop. Anyway, thank you all for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. See y'all. <laughs>